Hello and welcome to the October 2021 Storage Town Hall. I'm going to start with a forward-looking statement. This document contains forward-looking statements about our product direction. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described for our products remains at the sole discretion of Storage Labs. The information herein is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied on in making purchase decisions. In this town hall, we're going to start with an executive summary from Ben Golub. We'll talk a little bit about the storage CCS and uh, provide some network updates. We'll talk through the roadmap and the product update and what's coming in the near uh, term here. We'll get a uh, report from Catherine Johnson, head of people operations on the token report. And then I'll close out with just an update on the community. Our speakers today are Ben Golub, Chief Executive Officer of Storage Labs, Catherine Johnson, Chief People and Legal Officer, Head of Compliance for Storage Labs, and me, John Gleason, Chief Operating Officer. So let me pass that over to Ben Golub to deliver the executive summary. Ben? Thank you, John. And as always, thank you to the members of our community for joining us, to our fantastic employees, to the broader developer community, uh, to our storage node operators, and of course, increasingly now, a big thanks to our customers who have stuck with us and have helped make this project and this approach a reality. This is our normal town hall. It's been a very exciting quarter. Uh, as a little bit of history, Storage launched the world's first enterprise-grade decentralized storage service in uh, April of 2020 with our V3 launch. We did a major upgrade with the launch of Storage DCS in April of this year. And as you can imagine, since launching, we've had a, an increased focus on customers, on making sure that all of the rough edges are sanded down and making sure that this product really delivers on all of its goals. And we've been incredibly excited about what we've seen over the past, uh, over the past several months. When we first launched Storage in April of 2020, we viewed it as enterprise grade because it had 100% durability, could be priced at uh, one third of that of the major cloud providers um, and had performance that was on par. Since launching, since our launch of Storage DCS in April, we've increased our compatibility, but we've also continued to see great strides um, in availability. We've now been maintaining over 100% availability in addition to 100% durability. We were able to price at one fifth to one twentieth of that of the major cloud providers. And perhaps most excitingly now, we are not only on par for performance, but in many, many, many use cases, we're actually 10 times or greater faster um, than the large cloud providers. So incredibly excited that we're now offering enterprise grade decentralized storage in an economically exciting way for both customers uh, and community members and storage node operators um, and able to deliver performance that rivals in many cases, uh, CDNs for Glacier type uh, prices. Um, this quarter has been focused on continuous improvement, uh, achieving success in key use cases, which I'll be talking about. Of course, working on uh, customer onboarding, user experience, documentation, uh, making sure that we are really nailing uh, the product market fit for our initial customers and our initial use cases, driving up performance improvement. And this is now starting to pay off, not only in terms of results that we can point to, uh, in terms of numbers and revenue and performance, but also in terms of our customers' reaction. And we're now routinely seeing a net promoter scores that are between 35 and 45 a week. It's important for us not only to be successful for customers, of course, it's important to be uh, successful for our node operators. And uh, we've been seeing great results there in terms of the feedback that we're getting, as well as the uh, join and churn rates. And it's not only important for us to be leaders in technology and community, we also want to be leaders in governance uh, and transparency. Q4. Continued focus on growth and demand from customers and partners. We're starting to see petabyte scale prospects and petabyte scale usage of the network in both uh, uh, degress and, and storage. We have a major initiative going on to make sure that we meet from a regulatory uh, standpoint, uh, privacy and compliance, as well as uh, of course, from a technology standpoint, uh, an update on our white paper, progress towards community satellites uh, and some exciting work around openness and development. And as always, we want to be run well as a, uh, as a business as well, continued financial discipline. Um, uh, we just passed our second audit, which is a very unusual thing for a company that has a crypto asset. Uh, but we also continually uh, beat our profitability and our expense goals, both because of that discipline, as well as the favorable crypto uh, market climate. Uh, we have uh, 
several years of runway to, to really see this thing through. So with that, let me talk a little bit about storage uh, DCS, uh, our network and updates. As I mentioned, uh, we are not in this uh, just to create a cool proof of concept or create something that is uh, exciting for the future of Web 3.0. We also want to make sure that we meet the needs of developers and enterprises today, uh, which means being truly enterprise grade, making sure that we deliver uh, security and privacy that is better than could ever be offered by a centralized approach that is compatible with existing applications as well as new applications that offers reliability, availability, durability, and performance, that offers great economics, and that gives us the ability to take advantage of where the industry is going, which of course is increasingly towards edge-based approaches. And as data is created and consumed and analyzed and distributed at the edge, we want to make sure that we are at the edge as well. And that of course is a great use case for decentralized storage. Again, the a uh, nice pattern that we've seen as a company is that we've gone from uh, our initial launch where we were 100% durability, uh, S3 compatible, and about one third the price of Amazon S3 to at our uh, latest release being not only 100% durable, but 100% available with pricing that's one fifth to one uh, 20th or even one 40th that of the large uh, providers with performance that is now exceeding for many, many, many use cases. And this is all not just a result of hard work, but because of the inherent advantages of taking the decentralized approach and taking advantage of massive parallelism. So some uh, hard numbers to put behind that. Since our April launch, uh, we've seen continued growth across the board. We've seen great growth in the number of customers. We're now passing the 40,000 customer mark. Uh, we're edging in on the 500 million object mark. We have, of course, been maintaining uh, our high levels of uh, durability. We've not lost a single file since going into alpha nearly three years ago. And uh, as we measure our availability, uh, we have been at 100% availability uh, for the past several months. We are continuing to add new customers, of course. And something that's very exciting to us on a roughly uh, month, uh, on roughly every month, we are adding 45% uh, in terms of the amount of egress that is being consumed by customers. Uh, egress is a very important metric for us in addition to total data stored because that tends to drive economics well for us and for our storage yard operators. We're continuing to see very promising pipeline and partner growth, uh, much larger customers. Again, now we're starting to go from customers with tens or hundreds of ter terabytes to customers who have uh, petabytes of data. Uh, and that's starting to show up in our networks, uh, customers and prospects and uh, growing reseller network, especially uh, in Europe where the privacy and security and decentralization aspects of our service seem to really, really resonate well. We are starting to see much greater um, clarity around the use cases for which storage as it exists today is a great fit. There are four use cases that we are putting uh, our emphasis on uh, and that we are seeing customers uh, fit into. This is video storage and streaming where the native parallelism of, of storage and the economics really make it great for storing videos. One of those videos are uh, viewed occasionally, uh, such as surveillance videos, or whether they're uh, videos that are served, like entertainment videos. The fact that we can uh, scrub and stream 4K videos over a decentralized network in an encrypted fashion is a very exciting um, use case for us. We also see a lot of usage in cloud native applications, both uh, Kubernetes style applications, as well as uh, increasingly for Web3 applications. Uh, of course, we are excited about our uh, ability to work well with large files, both academic data sharing as well as uh, software distribution. And we'll be focusing on some customers later on in this presentation. And of course, tried and true backup um, where customers have valuable data that they wanna make sure can be stored economically, but also reliably for the long term, and yet be recovered in an instant uh, if need be for uh, recovery uh, objectives. I've spoken a lot about uh, performance, and this is an especially exciting development that we've had this past quarter. Um, it's not an easy thing. Uh, while parallelism should mean that we have inherently better performance, we are also trying to make sure that we get great performance, even though the data is encrypted and uh, erasure coded and distributed. We've taken a very sensible approach of optimizing for a bandwidth constrained environment, minimizing coordination related dependencies, uh, honing, uh, and balancing to reduce long tail effects and maximizing the advantage of parallelism. And the results really speak for themselves. 
So uh, these are some of the results that we've seen. These have also been independently validated by uh, customers and, uh, and by researchers who are going to be putting out their report shortly. If you're not familiar with performance reporting, this is measuring throughput. Uh, the vertical axis here is measuring on the top graph download speeds in, as you can see, sort of hundreds of megabits per second. Uh, and uh, the bottom uh, actually going up to thousands of uh, megabits per second. Um, and as we add more and more CPUs or add thicker pipes, um, we're really seeing our ability to saturate those pipes. And just as a, a frame of comparison, when we run similar tests with centralized cloud providers, often the vertical graph is measured in, in tens of megabit, megabits per second, not, not in hundreds of thousands as you're seeing here. So we're very excited by this. And this is a fundamental advantage of doing things in a decentralized, highly parallelized way. Looking forward to our roadmap, a lot of exciting things on the uh, horizon for this quarter. Of course, a focus on uh, continual improvement in user experience, in performance, uh, and in the node operator experience. Uh, a number of integrations that will be coming out to increase pro programmatic usage. We are S3 compatible. We have our native uplink. Uh, we're also making it much easier for people who are writing in different languages or who are trying to build Web3 type applications uh, to integrate with us natively as well as enabling more native use of the token. Um, some regulatory work that we need to do around 1099 tracking and uh, a good focus on compliance for storage. Uh, already, the um, feedback that we get from customers and from security resources, researchers is that the uh, nature of the way that we do security with decentralization, uh, encryption by default, by not having keys, by being zero knowledge, is actually far more secure, not just for traditional types of attacks, but now increasingly for ransomware attacks, where uh, the fact that we decentralize access as well as uh, storage uh, is a huge advantage. But nonetheless, customers operate in a regulatory environment and often need to answer questions like, where's the data actually stored? Is it stored in compliant data centers? And for that, we have work to be done uh, that's coming up both on a regulatory and a legal perspective in terms of disclosures, as well as additional product features that will make it possible for storage to be used for um, uh, even highly regulated industries. And now that we have largely completed the white paper that we uh, published nearly three years ago, uh, it's time for the next version of that white paper, uh, which will have a focus on further decentralization around satellites. Now I'm moving on to perhaps my most uh, part of the presentation that I'm most excited about, which is talking about actual customers. And we have uh, two customers who are uh, going to be highlighted today. And of course, we're very grateful to them, not only for being customers, but for allowing us to share their stories. The first customer is Pixel Experience. Uh, Pixel Experience distributes 60 different builds monthly of its Android uh, open source project ROM. These are large files um, where there are lots of downloads, over 50,000 monthly downloads around the world. These are huge files. Um, they chose storage DCS for its global distribution, bandwidth performance, and the way it reduces complexity. They've seen not only great results in terms of economics and in bandwidth performance, but uh, heightened security, reliability, and great support. We're very uh, happy that Pixel Experience has chosen to work with us. And if you want to read more, uh, we have a link here to the case study. Next customer I'd like to talk about is Simit. Simit is a company that you may not have heard about, but in fact, they have a very storied history. Uh, in fact, if you are at all a, a student of the Green Revolution, Nobel Prize winner Norman Borlaug uh, started out with Simit. Literally millions of people around the world owe their lives to the work that Simit has done in terms of getting the latest in agricultural technology and crop technology out to feed a hungry world. They are in the business of sharing data and making sure that the data that is necessary, especially genetic data around crops is available around the world. Uh, this is a noble pursuit and of course a pursuit that is dependent on uh, doing things in a very economical way because most of the researchers do not have large budgets. Uh, most of the people who use their data do not have large budgets and giving them the ability to make large data sets available worldwide um, in an economic, performant, and secure way is important not just to CIMIT, but to their many partners who are part of the Dataverse Collective, as well as to researchers around the world. And this is a, another use case that we're starting to see more and more use of, which is academic data sharing, which is something that we're not only excited to see we're a good fit for, but also uh, aligns with our mission and vision uh, and our values as a company. 
we not only want to be leaders in technology and in serving customers, but also in transparency and governance. Uh, this is an ongoing effort that we've had as a company. For many years, we've been providing uh, fully transparent uh, information about our token flows and our wallets. Uh, of course, we publish our uh, privacy policies. We now have a new section on our website, which is basically covering the things that uh, people at, at uh, within storage feel we need to be doing even better at. And so lots of dis discussion about security encryption, about our satellites, inline segments, um, where we have work to do to become fully S3 compatible, of course, fully, uh, full transparency around pricing and uh, performance. And finally, something we're very excited about, we have gone from publishing uh, on a periodic basis data about the network and the statistics to now making it live. So you don't need to wait for town halls or uh, blog posts to understand what's happening with our data. The data is available live, both in dashboards that we provide, as well as an API, and members of our community are slicing and dicing the data to make it easy to really understand what's happening within the storage network as a whole. Uh, we have a saying within storage that the only way to have trust in a trustless environment is full transparency and full sharing of data, and that's what we strive for. We also strive for openness in development, and we have been open source since the beginning. Uh, we are now moving towards the next step, which is um, open development as well. So this not only means that the code is fully available, but all of the roadmaps and the issue lists and the trackers and the bugs uh, are available uh, in open uh, within Get GitHub as well. Um, we're starting with our storage uh, node software, and this is something we just launched at the beginning of the month in honor of Hacktoberfest. All right, thank you, Ben. Now let's turn it over to Catherine Johnson for the token report. Catherine? Thanks, John. So as you know, at each town hall, we provide the highlights from our token balances and flows report, which are published on our blog. These provide detailed information on our storage tokens, balances, and flows in any given quarter. Our historic quarterly token balances and flow reports are all available on our blog, storage.io, with the token report for Q3 of 2021 being published on the site this week. So these reports have been provided for more than two, two years and can be viewed both on the website and then also as we discuss them in the quarterly town halls that are available on YouTube. We have nearly three years of regular quarterly reporting, again, with the reports on the blog and the highlights in these town halls. Taking a look at the activity in the past quarter, you'll see that storage used 1.3 million tokens for its operations, with 0.2 million of those going to storage node operators, 0.5 million going to third-party service providers, and 0.6 million used for payment to our storage employees as part of a voluntary token salary program. As of the end of Q3, there were 214.4 million tokens in long-term lockups, 13.5 million tokens in our operating supply, and 197.1 million in circulation. The total storage token supply is 425 million. Turning now to the long-term lockups on the next slide, as discussed in prior town halls and as previously reported, we initially relocked 100% or all of our time lock tokens every six months. In Q1 of 2019, we divided the time lock reserve into eight equal sized tranches of 30.6 million tokens each that unlock in successive quarters and relock respectively to the same quarter two years later. Each tranche unlocks the last day of the quarter. So as you can see, the tranche that unlocked at the end of the first quarter of this year was relocked until the first quarter two years from now, or 2023. The tranche that unlocked at the end of the second quarter was uh, this year was relocked until the second quarter of 2023. And the tranche that just unlocked at the end of September has been relocked until Q3 of 2023. This pattern will continue and we will continue reporting on it each quarter with the addresses made public so that you can, as we say, trust but verify. Now, should the company decide to leave any tranche unlocked, we've committed to letting the public know about that decision at least 60 days in advance. For more information on the token activity over this past quarter, this last quarter, please visit our website and read the most recent token flows report. Thanks so much. I'll turn it back over to you, John. Thank you, Catherine. Now for a community update. First, let me start by saying thank you to the storage node operators out there that make the network possible. The 13,000 plus storage node operators make the amazing level of service that Ben talked about earlier possible, and we're really excited to see where this can grow into the future. Um, the update on the network 
growth has been absolutely phenomenal in terms of customers joining and trying the networking, getting the great benefits in terms of the economics, the performance, the security, and the privacy. Uh, one of the uh, really interesting things that Ben described is the open development process. We're very excited about uh, making our development process more open and uh, much easier for external contributors to provide input into our development process and to uh, commit code. Um, we're really excited about uh, uh, a number of community contributions we've seen over the past several quarters, and we're looking forward to getting a lot more as we roll forward, uh, particularly uh, with projects where we can also enhance the other project's use of uh, storage as a data layer through programmatic use. We've got some new initiatives that we rolled out this past quarter, especially in terms of uh, providing greater levels of transparency and communication with our storage node uh, operator and developer communities. Uh, we started a uh, first round of fireside chats where executives from Storage Labs are uh, answering questions from the community in a uh, both a video format and a written format. So far, the feedback's been good, and we plan on continuing those and adapting them to make them as uh, as usable and uh, and helpful for the community in all regards. Uh, we also started the Let's Talk Storage webinar series, where we provide some deeper dives into different aspects of the platform, both from a functional perspective as well as from a, a process and a policy perspective. Those have been uh, uh, very well received, and we'll continue doing those through at least the remainder of the year. Um, we have an additional update where we've provided some proposal uh, information to the community in terms of how we're structuring payouts to storage node operators and how we can best leverage the L2 network um, in terms of uh, driving usage and adoption. Uh, that conversation is ongoing, but hopefully uh, we can continue to see uh, success there as, uh, as we move through a period of, of relatively high ETH transaction fees as we approach a world where we have proof of stake instead of proof of work and also a greater adoption of L2, particularly in the exchanges. The last thing I'd like to say is new projects are definitely welcome. So as we're uh, looking to expand uh, the scope of services that we offer and the shape of the network in terms of the different projects with which we integrate, if you have a project out there that you think is a good fit for what we do in terms of our storage layer or particularly where uh, the business value of two use cases come together are particularly helpful, please, by all means, join the community or uh, or reach out to us either at partnerships at storage.io or sales at storage.io uh, we're happy to talk to, uh, to different projects and see how we can uh, we can expand the storage universe together and again thank you for joining us for the town hall uh, we look forward to receiving any questions and we'll publish those questions and responses in our community forum within two weeks after the end of the town hall thank you for joining us